In this video, we'll see one more impossibility result known as the Plotkin bound. So here's the story so far, at least for q equals 2, at least for the trade-off between rate and distance. So we saw the Hamming bound and the Singleton bounds. These are impossibility results. They say that these trade-offs between rate and distance up here are not achievable. We also saw the gilbert varshamov bound, that's a possibility result, and it says that these trade-offs down here are achievable. And we were left with the question, are trade-offs in here, this yellow region, achievable or not? Let's focus in on this big gap here. This gap might make you wonder whether or not it's possible to get trade-offs, say, here. That is, for a binary code, is it possible to have distance greater than a half and rate greater than zero? It turns out that the answer is no, and this is what the Plotkin bound tells us. So here's what the Plotkin bound says. Let C be an NKDQ code. Then the following two things are true. First, if the distance D of C is equal to 1 minus 1 over Q times N, so if Q is equal to 2, that says the distance is right here at 1 half, then the size of the code is at most 2 times Q times N. Further, if the distance is bigger than that, up here somewhere, then the size of the code is smaller still, smaller than D divided by D minus 1 minus 1 over Q times N. The punchline here is that the answer to our previous question is no. That is, this implies that if the relative distance delta is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over Q, that is in the picture we're sort of in this region over here, then the rate of the code r, which remember is equal by definition to the log base Q of the size of C divided by N, must go to zero as n goes to infinity. That's because the log base q of either of these things divided by n tends to zero as n goes to infinity. So that means that out here, the rate better be zero. We're going to omit the proof of the Plotkin bound in these videos, but you can check out the lecture notes for pointers to a proof. However, we will state and prove the following useful corollary, which extends the Plotkin bound to delta that is less than 1 minus 1 over q. So here's what the corollary says. Let C be a family of codes with rate r and distance delta, which is less than 1 minus 1 over q. So in the picture, now we're over in this region. Then, this corollary says, the rate r is bounded above by 1 minus q divided by q minus 1 times delta, plus some little o of one term. That is, this is a term that goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Actually, I guess since this is a statement about a family of codes with asymptotic rate r, we're taking n to infinity anyway, so I'm just going to erase that. There we go. Here's a nice corollary. So for q equals 2, the picture looks like this. We've got our singleton bound and our Hamming bound and our GV bound as before, and the Plotkin bound comes down like this. So it's a little bit worse than the Hamming bound over here, but it's better than the Hamming bound as delta is larger over here. So this is the picture for q equals 2. What about for q greater than 2? Pause the video now and think about what the picture is going to look like as q gets larger. Okay, so hopefully you've figured out that the picture looks something like this for larger q. Again, this is just a stylized picture that's drawn by hand, not an actual plot. So we have the singleton bound and the plotkin bound. These are just straight lines. The singleton bound doesn't depend on the alphabet size, it's always just this straight line. And the plotkin bound is going to be a straight line ending at this point, 1 minus 1 over q. Notably, that is also where the gv bound ends up. Okay, so like I said, we're not going to prove the Plotkin bound, that's this theorem here, but we are going to prove this corollary. 
assuming the theorem. So let's do that now. First, let's choose a parameter n prime to be equal to the floor of d times q divided by q minus 1 minus 1. Just a note, this implies that d is strictly greater than 1 minus 1 over q times n prime. So this looks like a funny expression, but we only chose it basically to make this true. Now, for all x in sigma to the n minus n prime, let's define a new code, c sub x, which is equal to the set of vectors c n minus n prime plus 1, c n minus n prime plus 2, dot a dot up to c n, such that c is a code word in our original code, so that the first part of c, that is c1 up to c n minus n prime, is equal to x. That is, c sub x is the set of ends of code words in c, so that the beginnings are equal to x. So these are the last n prime symbols, and these are the first n minus n prime symbols. Now, I claim that c sub x has distance at least d. To see why, let's draw a picture. So let's consider two code words in c, c and c prime, that both have the same beginning, x. That means that this thing here is a code word in cx, and this thing here is also a code word in cx. And I claim that these two things must have distance from each other, at least d. But that's true because the original two code words, c and c prime, had to have distance from each other, at least d, because c has distance d. But if these original two things must have distance d and they agree here, then all the distance must be coming from this end part. And so the corresponding code words in cx also have distance at least d from each other. So that shows that c sub x has distance at least d. Also, let's observe that c sub x has length n prime, which as noted before, is at most d divided by 1 minus 1 over q. Now, let's apply our theorem, which I copied up here, to c sub x. The theorem implies that the size of c sub x is at most d divided by d minus 1 minus 1 over q times n prime. That's part b of the theorem. Multiplying the top and the bottom by q, we see that this is equal to q times d divided by q times d minus q minus 1 times n prime. And this is at most q times d. The reason this is at most q times d is that this denominator is greater than 0, and it's an integer, so it better be greater than or equal to 1. OK, so the size of each c sub x is at most q times d. Let's go on to a new slide and recall that we just showed that for all x, the size of c sub x is at most q times d. Now, I claim that we have the size of c is equal to the sum over all x and sigma to the n minus n prime times the size of c to x. That's because the size of c to x is just the number of code words in c that start with x, and every code word in c has to start with something, so just add them all up. Now, applying what we just learned, we see that this is at most q to the n minus n prime times qd, using the fact that this sum has q to the n minus n prime things in it. And plugging in the definition of n prime, this is q to the n minus the floor of qd divided by q minus 1 plus 1 times qd. I'm going to write this as exp sub q, that just means q to the stuff, so q to the n minus 
qd divided by q minus 1 plus a little o of n term. Here, this little o of n term is capturing the floor on that and the plus 1 and, and stuff like that. Pulling out an n, this is equal to x sub q. Again, that just means q to the stuff of n times 1 minus q over q minus 1 times delta, the relative distance. Remember that delta is just d divided by n, that's why it shows up here, plus a little o of one term. Altogether, this implies that the rate r, which remember by definition is equal to the log base q of c divided by n, is at most this thing. 1 minus q divided by q minus 1 times delta plus little o of 1. And that's what we wanted to show. So this proves this nice corollary to the Plotkin bound. So to summarize, here is what we know so far about the best possible trade-offs between rate and distance. We have seen impossibility results, the singleton bound, the Hamming bound, and now the Plotkin bound, which limit what trade-offs between rate and distance are possible. And we've also seen the GV bound, a possibility result. Looking at this picture, you might wonder why we bothered to prove the singleton bound. It seems like the Plotkin bound always strictly dominates it. On the one hand, that's true. On the other hand, in a future video, we are going to see a family of codes that achieves the singleton bound. Before we get there, you should think about how that might be possible given the Plotkin bound that we've just proved.